These are the sneak releases that you need to know about in June 2024. This is Sitter Cell. Starting things off on June 1st, we've got the Neighborhood Adidas Superstar. This Neighborhood Adidas collaboration is a switch up on the classic Superstar silhouette. You've got gray tumbled leather hits with a gray rubber shell toe. You've also got this really interesting gray lightning bolt in the midsole of the shoe, which I've never seen before on a pair of Superstars. I actually really dig it. It also looks like in order to accommodate this new Neighborhood lightning bolt detail on the heel, they actually had to glue two pieces of midsole together, which gives the shoe a really unique sort of deconstructed look. Or I guess reconstructed look. You've also got the neighborhood branding embroidered into the upper of the shoe in white, both the text and the skull logo. And apparently this collab is dropping for a retail price of $160 only through the Adidas Confirmed app. Now usually something dropping on the Confirmed app does not guarantee that the shoe will sell out. We've seen that with Yeezys, but in this case, I do think the shoe has a great chance of selling out because it's a popular collaboration in a clean colorway on a relatively popular silhouette. So because of all of that, I'm giving the neighborhood Adidas Superstar collaboration a sell. Also dropping on the first is the Air Jordan 1 Low Silver. This shoe is a low top version of the classic Kodot JP Silver Air Jordan 1s it released back in 2001 and then re-released again in 2020. Because it's just a low top version of those shoes, it features basically all the same materials in all the same places. You've got gray suede covering a majority of the upper and then you've also got metallic silver on the toe, on the Nike swoosh and on the heel. And actually also like the original, you've still got that sort of bubble or I guess window wings logo, except this time around it's on the heel of the shoe instead of on the lateral side. Now this shoe is releasing for a retail price of $140, at least in men's sizing. I believe it also releases in full family sizing. And actually right now, before the shoe even releases, you can grab this shoe for under retail. And if you guys wanna do that, I've made sure to leave affiliate links to all of the shoes that we talk about in today's video through the links at the top of your screen in the YouTube shopping tab. And I mean, hey, if this shoe is already selling for under retail before it even releases, yeah, this shoe's gonna sit. But before we get into the next sneaker in today's sit or sell, I wanna tell you guys about some sneaker giveaways that I've got coming up in the next couple weeks. That's right, free sneakers, it's always a good thing. The first pair that we're giving away is a pair of Salehi Benbury Crocs, then we're giving away some Military Blue 4s, some Apothecary stuff, and anything's off with the Futura Nike Dunk Lows. In my opinion, the sneaker of the year. So I've actually partnered up with a company called Core that allows me to connect with you guys in a different way. Essentially, Core rewards you for watching my videos, which is kinda of wild. All you need to do is click the link in the top of the description below, and you can earn a badge. And each one of these badges are numbered and limited and of course completely free. And these first two badges that I've already dropped on Core not only allow me to message you through Core and connect with you guys through that website, but also enters you to win a pair of Salehi Benbury Crocs. And of course you can earn the second badge by clicking the link in the top of the description below in this video. The first badge I actually dropped last week secretly, I didn't tell anybody, and the people who happened to click on the description of that video, which you can watch right up there, got the badge first. And the way we're running the Salehi Benbury Crocs giveaway is that the top 10% of badge owners have a chance to win the pair of sneakers. Obviously it's going to be random for the top 10%. So if you want a chance to win this pair of Salehi Bemberis for absolutely free, make sure to get your badges ASAP. And again, in the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be dropping badges randomly in my videos and you guys can win pairs of sneakers like the Futura Nike Dunk Lows or the Military Blue 4s or Apothecary stuff, it's crazy. So if you guys wanna check it all out, make sure to click the link at the top of the description below and sign up for Core. Moving on to June 4th, we've got the Nike Pegasus 41. Pretty much every year, Nike releases a new version of their all-purpose running sneaker, the Pegasus. And this year, we're getting the Pegasus 41. However, unlike the last couple years, this shoe is changing things up pretty dramatically, at least in cushioning. The Nike Pegasus 41 not only features an Air Zoom unit, but also React X foam cushioning, which is the first time that they've done this in a Pegasus sneak. And I'll be honest, I'm really excited about this shoe. I'm not a huge runner, but I do really like the Pegasus line. It's a pretty comfortable everyday shoe, and the idea of combining Nike Zoom Air with React X it's pretty interesting. Plus, the Pegasus 41 doesn't look bad. I mean, sure, it's a basic looking Nike sneaker, but it's better looking than last year's version. I'm kind of stoked on it. I'm definitely gonna have to grab a pair for myself. And if you guys wanna see a full review of this shoe, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. The Peg 41 is releasing for a retail price of $140. And I'll be honest, I think there is a chance that this shoe could sell out because usually the first colorway of the new Pegasus sneakers tend to sell pretty well. I don't know if it's gonna be completely gone off shelves. I kind of doubt it, but I do think that if you're trying to grab a certain size, you wanna be right there right when it releases because I do think a lot sizes will sell out. So because of that, I'm gonna give this shoe a sell. Then rounding off June 4th, we've got two different pairs of sneakers from artist Dior Greenwood. The first is the Dior Greenwood Nike Blazer Mid. So Dior Greenwood is an artist from the Navajo Nation in Northern Arizona. And she's getting her first collaboration with Nike on two different pairs of SBs. The first is this pair of SB Dunk Mids, which comes in primarily black leather accented by tonal grays. You've got this really interesting shroud over the top of the laces, and it features sort of a Navajo pattern, both on the shroud and also on the midsole of the sneaker, which I've never seen before, the way that they've sort of like glued on a pattern. I think that's really cool. Actually, 
actually, I guess the Sakai Blazer sort of did that, but this is a really clean look. Obviously, I'm only able to look at the pictures right now because the shoe hasn't released yet, but the materials on this sneaker actually look really solid, especially for the price point. And speaking of the price point, it looks like this pair of Blazer Mids is going to release for just 110 bucks, which is not bad. And in my opinion, while not all Blazer Mids sell out, because the Dunk is going to be so popular, at least I think it's going to be really popular, this shoe will probably sort of tag onto that hype a little bit. Not saying it's not a clean sneaker, but Blazer Mids traditionally aren't as popular as Dunks. So because of all that, I realized I just went off on a tangent, but I do think that this shoe will end up selling out. The second shoe dropping as part of Dior Greenwood's collaboration is of course the Nike SB Dunk Highs. And again, the shoe is inspired by not only her art, but also her Navajo heritage. And it features a really nice color palette of sort of like reddy oranges and teal blues. The more that I look at the shoe, the more that I see details that I really, really like. Like for example, on the Nike swoosh, you've got what seems to be the big dipper. And then you've also got some star dots or hits all around the eye stays and the toe of the sneaker. And then also towards the heel of the shoe, you know, you've got this sort of like four ripples on the back of Nike SB Dunk Lows and Dunk Highs. You've actually got this really cool sort of color gradient from like a dark maroon color all the way down to a yellow. It looks very clean. And then the strap that goes over the laces is also that same sort of gradient. And I really like the way that it looks. Plus, it looks like on the insole, you've also got some images of Northern Arizona, which I think is amazing. So very cool collaboration, one that I'm really interested in personally. And I definitely think that this shoe will end up selling out. Continuing on to June 6th, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Low Miami. So this shoe is only releasing in grade school sizes. I'm not exactly sure why, but it comes in the Miami Hurricanes colorway, which is essentially white, green, and orange. And it's kind of got some Gatorade vibes to it. I don't know if you guys remember the Gatorade 6s or the Gatorade 1s. The paneling on the upper of the shoe though is a little bit different. You've got a suede area on the toe and then a patent leather on the midfoot, which is sort of a weird combination. And then of course you've got the midsole, which comes in greens and oranges. And then the sock liner again, which comes in, I guess it's orange. Yeah, it's orange. Oh, it's sort of like a chenille sock liner interesting shoes that release in just grade school sizes don't tend to sell out at least from what i can tell every time i go into like my local lapstone or Foot Locker or wherever i just see all the grade school colorways sitting i don't know if that's always the case but from what i can tell it seems like there's a lot of sitters i think this is gonna be another pair of sitters Next up on June 7th, we've got the Nike Zoom Vomero 5 in lime green. So when the Nike Zoom Vomero 5 first started heavily re-releasing back in like 2021, it first released back in 2007. It was actually the first shoe with Kushlan in it, apparently. But back to what I was saying, when it started re-releasing, uh, it came out in a bunch of monochromatic colorways, like usually like creams or maybe a black or a blue or something like that. But now they're starting to release it in a ton of different, like not really wackier colorways, but much more sportswear inspired colorways. And this lime green, black and gray colorway is definitely more of that. And I think there are a lot of people out there who are going to like this shoe because it sort of fits with that modern sportswear aesthetic. And also because it's a Vomero 5 ties in with that very popular 2000s running aesthetic. I don't mind this colorway one bit. I actually think it's very clean. The shoe is releasing for a retail price of 160 bucks and most likely likely will still be available in most sizes after the shoe releases on sneakers. So because of that, I am going to give this shoe a sit. Also dropping on June 7th, we've got the Nike LeBron 21 The Shop. So this shoe is technically a collaboration with LeBron James's podcast, The Shop, and it features this really interesting velvety gold upper. From what I've heard, because I've never actually owned a pair of LeBron 21s, I sound like a terrible sneaker reviewer, but I haven't. It's a great shoe, both for on-court performance and just comfort. And this might be the first pair of LeBron 21s that I would actually consider grabbing just because it's a clean colorway, one that I couldn't wear a lot, but one that I'd be down to wear if I was playing basketball. The velvety gold upper is interesting. You don't see that a lot on modern sneakers, and then you've also got the sort of marbleized outsole, which I think is pretty clean. It kind of has this sort of chocolatey gold vibe to it, which is pretty rad. I'm not going to lie. Kind of wish that was a pattern on the upper of the shoe because that'd be wild. All around a pretty clean shoe. I think it's a very solid colorway. I like it a lot. I think if you like the shop podcast or love LeBron or like gold, this is a shoe for you. However, I don't know what the hype is going to be like on this shoe. In my opinion, the only way this shoe would sell out is if it's incredibly limited, which it could be because it is technically a collaboration. My guess is that this shoe will end up sitting. Doesn't mean it's a bad sneaker. I just don't think it's going to sell out at least not that quickly. Then rounding off the seventh, we've got the Nike Kobe 4 Pro Tro Girl Dad. I gotta be completely 100% with you guys. The shoe itself is clean. It's a great pair of sneakers. I like the sort of like foresty green suede upper accented by the metallic silver on the heel and the black Nike swoosh. But in terms of Kobe releases that have happened this year, it's one of my least favorites based on the colorway. I don't think it's not clean. I think all of the Kobe sneakers that have released this year have been very clean. But for me, the reason this shoe is a must cop is because I recently became a girl dad. So I feel like it's, it's a perfect shoe. It's a match made in heads, especially because it's releasing the same year that I have my daughter. It's like perfect. Obviously, the shoe is inspired by Kobe and his daughters, and the colorway itself, like I said, is very clean. It's just not my favorite Kobe that's dropped this year, but it is going up against a bunch of classic Kobe, so it's hard to beat those. Either way, though, the shoe is releasing for $190. It's not going to be easy to get. I think it's going to be pretty limited. It's a very clean sneaker and a must cop for me, and because it is a Kobe Pro Tro, no matter which style or silhouette that it is, right now all Kobe Pro Tros are selling out, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe an absolute sell. Probably one of the most popular sneakers of the month. 
Moving on to June 8th, we've got the Air Jordan 6 Black and White, also known as the Air Jordan 6 Reverse Oreo. According to Nike, this Air Jordan 6 release pays homage to the classic Oreo Air Jordan 4 colorway, and I've got to be honest, if there's a pair of Air Jordan 6s that I was going to grab this year, this might be the one. The upper of the shoe comes in almost entirely white tumbled leather, accented by a black midsole with white speckle print. You've also got a semi-translucent outsole, which I think is very clean, and all around, it's simple, but it's one of the cleaner Air Jordan 6s to drop in a minute. Especially with the speckle printing on the black heel tab of the shoe, it's fire, man. I gotta be honest. Obviously the name reverse Oreo comes from the fact that the shoe is different from the Oreo 6s. It doesn't feature that black paneling that you're used to on the Oreo 6s. I don't know how this is a reverse version of that. It's just kind of a different version of that. It should have been alternate Oreo. Either way, cool looking sneaker. One that I definitely want to grab. It's retailing for $200, which I think is a lot, especially because you can buy it right now on the resale market for under retail. Again, if you guys want to check that out, links through the, uh, the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. Yes, you will have to pay shipping and fees, so it's probably going to be close to retail, but still probably under retail and honestly it's a clean look for summer and of course because the shoe is selling for under retail before it even releases the chance of this shoe selling out is pretty low so I'm gonna give this shoe a sit Next up, on June 12th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 1 Low Black and Gorge Green. So I've seen the name Gucci Air Jordan 1 Low sort of floated across the internet, and I can definitely understand that because the colorway definitely is reminiscent of the Gucci colors. You've got a black leather upper accented by green and red hits, both very dark tones of those colors. And all around, it's clean, but it's not something that uh, I think that many people will be excited about. Plus, it's women's only release, and it is releasing for $140, so it's not super cheap, and it's, you know, not coming in full family size. I'm for a lot of people is a deal breaker. This shoe is currently selling for under retail two weeks before it even releases. So because of that, I'm guessing this shoe will probably end up sitting on shelves. Actually, that colorway might match perfectly with the apothecary hats that we're dropping this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We've got a black and a green colorway and a cream and a brown colorway. And we're also dropping Air Jordan for military blue inspired socks. So a pretty interesting drop happening this Friday, one that I'm super excited about because I love these hats. I wear them all the time. Plus the snaps in the back of the hat are our logo. But yeah, I love both of these hats, wear them all the time. And uh, if you guys want to grab them, apothecary.com, 11 a.m. Eastern time, along with the military blue socks that are dropping. Moving on to June 13th, we've got the Nike Air Force One Low Linen. Actually, it's funny this shoe is dropping in June alongside the Air Jordan 1 lows that we talked about at the beginning of the video because these shoes are also a Co.JP exclusive that released back in 2001 and now in 2024, they're bringing them back. And this is probably one of my favorite pairs of Air Force 1 lows that has ever released. This shoe is beautiful and I will absolutely be trying to grab a pair. The upper of the shoe comes in a very light brown, probably what they're calling the linen color. And then you've also got this really nice light pink swoosh on the side of the shoe. It's fire. This shoe is like a perfect summer shoe. And I realize to a lot of people, it just looks like an Air Force One Low, but if you were a fan of that 2001 Code JP Linen Air Force One Low, you're gonna want this shoe. <sighs> Man, I can't get over how clean that shoe is. Well, either way, the Linen Air Force One Lows are releasing for a retail price of $135, and in my opinion, personally, I think these shoes will sell out. I don't know if they actually will because I don't know if the hype is there for them like it was back in the day. It probably isn't. You know what, let me check resale. The last sale was for $850, but to be fair, that was of the, uh, the 2016 pair, so I don't know. My guess is it's gonna sell out. There's no pairs available on StockX currently, so I'm not even gonna guess what the price is gonna be, but I would assume it's definitely gonna be more than retail, and in my opinion, it will probably sell out. Then rounding off the 13th, we've got the Artifact Nike Dunk Genesis 5 in Wildberry. So I'm not sure exactly what the deal is with this shoe because I pre-ordered this shoe back in November of last year and it looks like they're just dropping it to the public on the 13th. Why did I pre-order it? Well, I guess it will be easier than trying to grab it on the sneakers app because that's probably gonna be impossible. That said, the shoe is officially releasing on June 13th on the sneakers app. So if you want a pair of these and you didn't pre-order, you should be good to go. And man, it's a wild looking sneaker born from the sort of NFT era of the last couple years. Artifact is sort of a, a digital AR company. I'm not too familiar with what it is. I think it's actually owned by Nike now, but either way, the shoe is sort of a collab between the two companies. This colorway comes in black with a lot of cool like purple details or wild berry details like on the Nike swoosh and on the lightning bolt on the medial side of the shoe. It's clean. It's different. Is it something I'd wear all the time? Probably not, but I have a pair coming in, so stay tuned for the review because I'm going to drop a review as soon as I get that pair because I know a lot of people are interested in what it actually looks like in hand. Now, when it comes to pricing, I've seen a lot of different prices floating around like $222, $250, but the price that I've seen from the most reliable source, I'll be honest with you, I think is $150, so that's the pricing I'm gonna go with for this video. But either way, let's be honest, the retail price doesn't even matter that much because this shoe is most likely gonna sell out instantly, and so you're probably gonna have to pay resale for it. 
Moving on to June 14th, we've got the Nike KD17 Producer Pack, which comes with three different pairs of sneakers. So the Nike KD17 Producer Pack is literally made up of three different collaborations from three different producers. You've got a pair by The Alchemist, you've got a pair by Metro Boomin, and you've got a pair by Bink. And I guess if I had to pick a pair to wear casually, it would probably be Bink's pair, purely based on the color blocking of the shoe. I like the tans, I like the sort of, is that gray? the brownish gray, I like the yellow. I think Bing's pair is a pair that I would go for personally, but Metro Boomin's is cool. It's got sort of a lightning storm going on, and then you've also got the Alchemist, which kind of looks like a, uh, I don't know, kind of like a, an Air Max 95 inspired shoe, but I'm not 100% sure. If I had to go in order, I'd probably go Bink, then probably Metro Boomin, and then the Alchemist, but they're all fine. My guess is that these shoes will be relatively limited, and I do think that they all probably will sell out. I wouldn't be surprised if Metro Boomin's pair is the most popular pair, and then maybe Bink's, and then maybe the Alchemist, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So if you want a pair of these, Try and go for them right when they release because I don't think they'll be easy to get But I just don't know what the resale is gonna be like on the aftermarket if you miss out and you have to buy a pair So try and grab them when they release. I think they're gonna sell out don't have much more information on them uh, So who knows? Finally rounding off the 14th, we've got the Nike Air DT Max 96 in Varsity Maze. So this shoe is Deion Sanders, the football and baseball star's Nike sneaker. And over the last couple decades, his relationship with Nike hasn't been amazing, but it looks like in 2023, he came back for good, and because of that, we're getting some more Deion Sanders Nike sneakers. People don't really realize how insane of an athlete he actually was. He literally played in the MLB and the NFL, won two Super Bowls in the NFL, and made an appearance in the World Series, making him literally the only athlete to ever do both. It's crazy to think about. Now he's a head coach. Seems to be doing well there, at least at the beginning of the season. The dude's amazing. And this is the first time in a long time we're actually getting this shoe back. And of course, he's Coach Prime now, so everyone's hype on Deion Sanders once again. And uh, I think it's a perfect shoe at a perfect time. So I'm excited about it. And in my opinion, I think the shoe's gonna sell out. Moving on to the 15th, we've got the Adidas Samba Inter Miami. Obviously this shoe and all the other Inter Miami shoes are being made because Messi's on the team, but uh, I can't be mad at it because this shoe is actually kind of fire. This pair of Sambas comes in a Miami inspired colorway. You've got a white leather upper, sort of a light blue or teal colored Adidas logo on the side of the shoe in the way of the three stripes. You've got gray suede hits on the toe, you've got a gum outsole, and of course some light pink hits on the heel. And for a hundred bucks, it's not a bad pair of Sambas. Do I think it's gonna fly off shelves? Probably not, but if you're looking for a clean summer pair of Sambas and you like Inner Miami or like Messi or just like the colors, this is a great way to go. Also dropping on the 15th, we've got the Adidas Gazelle MLS. This shoe comes in a light blue suede upper accented by the white Adidas three stripes on the side of the shoe and some pink hits on the heel. And the Adidas Gazelle has been taking the world by force this year, so it's not surprising that they're coming out with a new colorway of the shoe to match the sort of major league soccer vibes and probably Miami vibes. This shoe is really clean, it's $110, so $10 more than the Sambas, and also like the Sambas, I don't think this shoe is gonna sell out. Then finishing off June 15th, we've got the Air Jordan 4 Remastered Oxidized Green. So my pair literally just came in the mail as I was filming this video, and it's one of the cleaner pairs of Air Jordan 4s that I think is gonna release this year. And it's kind of surprising because the hype for this shoe is not that crazy. I bought this pair for like 280 two weeks ago, and it finally just came in. I think the price has actually dropped since then, and I wouldn't be surprised if now it's under retail. It is under retail right now. It's like 200 bucks on StockX. So 210 for retail, $200 if you want to grab it resale, but again, you will have to pay for like fees and shipping and things like that, so it probably will be a bit more expensive than retail, but you can get this pair early, like two weeks early if you order it now. Again, links to do that at the top of the screen, but I am working on a review for this shoe. I don't think it's gonna go live until after this video goes live, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet to check out the review if you guys are interested, but genuinely a clean sneak it's got a white leather upper, it's got some nice forest green hits, and then this sort of like candy apple green right there, which is pretty cool. And the color blocking on this shoe is basically the military blue forest, but the materials actually seem nicer. You've got this sort of leather heel tab area. It's dope. It's actually a really dope shoe. And then you've also got the oxidized hit, is my guess, uh, on the midsole of the shoe, this sort of cream color. I don't know, man. Very clean summer sneaker. I'm really surprised that there's not a lot of hype on it. That being said, although this shoe is going for under retail currently on resale sites, I would not be surprised if this shoe does mostly sell out. Probably some sizes will still be available after release, um, but I think a majority of sizes will sell out. And uh, because of that, I'm leaning more towards giving this shoe a sell, just because I do think it's gonna be a more popular GR release than a lot of the other GRs that we've gotten this month and previous months. So I'm gonna give this shoe a sell, but I don't think it's gonna be that hard to grab in store if you just wanna walk into a store and grab it. I really think it's gonna be a pretty easy cop. Moving on to June 18th, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Philly. So this shoe actually already had an early release in Philadelphia on May 30th, I believe, but now it's releasing to the rest of the country on the Sneakers app on the 18th. And at the time that I'm filming this video, the shoe hasn't even released in Philadelphia yet, and it's a shoe that I really wanna grab. 
but uh, I'm not too hopeful because it's only releasing it like Laps Under Hammer because I think actually Laps Under Hammer helped design it, so makes sense. The design of the shoe is inspired by the sidewalks of Philadelphia, and then it also features the Philly text on the heel of the shoe, which I believe is inspired by the murals in Philadelphia. So it's definitely a sort of street inspired shoe, which I actually kind of like. I don't know if I like it as much as the Phillies Dunks it released a couple years back, but I do think it's very clean. I love the Philadelphia vibes to it. Now I understand more why people from Atlanta want the Atlanta themed Air Max 95s because it is kind of cool to rep your city and your sneakers, but I don't know. It's a dope shoe. It's 135 bucks, so it's not going to break the bank. However, it is more expensive than other Nike Dunks. I believe it is a Nike Dunk Glow Premium, and that's why. But uh, I do think there's going to be a lot of hype behind it, and in my opinion, this shoe is going to sell out. Dropping on June 20th, we've got Nina Chanel Abney's Women's Air Jordan 3 Bio Coastal. Last year, she collaborated with Jordan Brand on some pairs of Air Jordan 2s, and this year, she's dropping a collab on the Air Jordan 3, which I do think is gonna be a more popular collaboration because, well, mainly it's a more popular silhouette. It's sad to say that that's the reason that some collaborations do well and others don't, but people just like the Air Jordan 3 more than they like the Air Jordan 2s, and while her Air Jordan 2 collaborations were solid, they definitely didn't have the hype that these Air Jordan 3s had. Now, this collaboration is definitely one of the wilder Air Jordan 3s to drop in a minute. First of all, you've got this all green upper that kind of looks like AstroTurf, it's not. It's like a green suede, but still kind of has that vibe to it. And then you've also got this cream colored midsole and outsole. But I think the part that most people are excited about with this collaboration is actually the heel tab. The detail that really draws a lot of people's attention is the green chenille text. It's very CPFM-esque. It says Nike Air, and then you've got the Nike logo in the middle. It almost looks like grass is growing out of the back of the shoe. It's a super cool effect. And then you've also got this orange Jumpman tag sort of hanging out of the side. That is the part of the shoe that draws everyone's attention. And that is the part of the shoe that I think is gonna make this one of the most popular collaborations of the year. It's crazy to say that just a, one part of the sneaker would do that, but I mean, look at, you know, the off-white collaborations. The zip tie became the iconic feature, or sneakers with light-up soles. Like, those are the things that draw people's attention, and this is a detail that I think a lot of people are really gonna love. Now, even though this shoe is technically a women's exclusive, it is releasing for a pretty high retail price of $225, which is significantly higher than a standard pair of women's Air Jordan 3s, but in my opinion, it might be worth it. It's a very clean look, and one that I'm definitely gonna be trying to grab. I don't know exactly where the shoe is gonna rank in terms of best sneaker releases of the year, but I think for a lot of people it will be up there. So because of that, I wouldn't be surprised if this shoe ends up selling out. Moving on to June 22nd, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 11 Low Legend Pink. This women's pair of 11 lows comes with a white nylon upper accented by pink patent leather around the bottom half of the upper. You've also got a pink semi-translucent outsole and other pink hits throughout the sneaker. I actually don't think it's a bad shade of pink. I think it's a clean looking sneaker, especially for summer. And at a retail price of 190, it's not wildly expensive, but it is more expensive than a women's pair of Air Jordan 11s, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the Air Jordan 11 Space Jams dropped at 190, so that seems, that seems kind of high. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they were 200. I don't remember, let me know in the comment section down below. But either way, 190 bucks, June 22nd, will they sell out? Probably not, but I do think it's a clean release and it's not a bad shoe to grab if you like this sneaker. Dropping on the same day, we've got the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Metallic Burgundy. I don't know why it took this shoe so long to release. I think this shoe was supposed to release like back in March and now it's finally releasing in June and the hype is dead on this sneaker, like 100%. Even though it's a dope shoe, the hype is completely dead. And I think that's because the hype train was starting to build, people were getting excited about it and then they pushed it back and now no one cares as much because you can buy it for under retail on resale sites. That being said, that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a cool pair of sneakers. It's an 85 cut, my favorite cut of the Air Jordan 1s. It's cut just like the original. It feels awesome and the leather's better than usual. It actually doesn't feel awesome right off the bat. You have to wear it in a bit. But it does feel better than standard Jordan 1s once you've worn it in a little bit. And the colorway is really clean. It's not an OG Air Jordan 1 colorway, it's close but it's not exactly like the original metallic red Air Jordan 1s. It's a slightly darker shade, but honestly, I think it might be a bit more wearable. Plus, it's only 180 bucks. So you're getting a high quality pair of shoes for 180 bucks in a clean colorway. I think it's a win-win. But again, you can buy it for $40 under retail right now on resale sites. So probably not worth waiting for. If you wanna grab a pair, just grab them now through the links at the top of the screen or you know at your local resale store. They're not going for much. So obviously, I think the shoe's gonna end up sitting on shelves, but I do think it's a steal for that price. I think it's a great pair of sneakers. And even for retail, I'd still say it's worth picking up. Finally, rounding off the 22nd, we've got the return of the Huff Nike Air Max 1. So this shoe is dropping in honor of the 20th anniversary of the original release of this shoe, one of the most popular Air Max 1s of the last couple decades. This Air Max 1 comes in a tonal gray upper accented by sort of a darker neon green color around the sock liner of the shoe and on the Nike swoosh. Not only that, but the materials used on the Nike swoosh and the mudguard of the shoe are actually leather, making it a bit more premium than other pairs of Nike Air Max 1s. I understand there's probably a lot of you guys out there who didn't care about sneakers 20 years ago when this shoe first released, but it's a very popular shoe shoe that a lot of people loved back in the day and I think if you like the colorway or you like the history of the shoe definitely a shoe worth picking up and for 160 bucks it won't break the bank however I do think the shoe is going to be relatively difficult to get I do think it's going to be limited and also people love this shoe so in my opinion this shoe is going to sell out 
Moving on to June 25th, we've got the Nike Jaw 1 NY versus NY. This shoe comes in a dark blue, pink, and light blue colorway, and of course features the NY versus NY branding on the heel. If you're not familiar, NY versus NY is an outdoor summer basketball tournament that's become famous in New York City, and every year Nike releases a new pair of shoes to sort of honor that tournament. And this year they're going for a recent basketball model in the Jaw 1. I think last year it was the Nike Dunks, and I love that colorway. It was fire. I couldn't grab a pair though. And I think it's a pretty clean release. It's a clean pair of Jaw 1s. It's something that I want to grab personally, probably not, but not a bad look. And for $130, not a bad price either. But will this shoe sell out? In my opinion, no. Also dropping on the 25th, we've got the Air Jordan 13 Dune Red. So this colorway is very similar to the Bin 23 Air Jordan 13s that released a while back. And I think that's the obvious inspiration behind this shoe. I mean, they're releasing more GR colorways of like PE releases. At least that's what they've been doing over the last couple years. And while yes, it does kind of water down the coolness of those PEs, it's still nice to be able to grab colorways of these Jordan sneakers that we weren't able to grab before. This shoe comes in a primarily summery red upper accented by a white toe area. And then this sort of like light salmon pink color on the midsole and all around it's clean but I don't think it's that exciting. It retails for $210 and if you like the bin 23s but never want to spend the money on them which I totally understand I wouldn't want to either then this is a great way to go. Do I think this shoe is going to sell out? Probably not. Jordan 13s haven't been that popular. Even the playoff 13s and OG colorway didn't sell out so my guess is that this shoe is going to be like all of the other 13s that have released over the last year or two. I think the shoe is probably going to end up sitting on shelves. Then finally rounding up the 25th, we've got the Nike Sabrina 2 Court Vision. So this shoe, the Sabrina 2, is obviously Sabrina Ionescu's second sneaker with Nike, and in my opinion, it's pretty clean. The Sabrina 1s were actually pretty popular, and the Sabrina 2s I think are gonna be probably as popular, at least in the first release colorway of this shoe. Speaking of which, the first colorway of this shoe is the Court Vision colorway, which essentially is a court purple and black and white, and I personally dig it because I'm a Ravens fan and I like anything purple, which to be fair is no relation to the shoe, the player, or the team that she plays on, but I like purple shoes. The Sabrina 2s are releasing for a retail price of $130, and I think as with most other first colorways of new performance basketball sneakers, this shoe might end up selling out. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. But that pretty much wraps up Sit or Sell for the month of June 2024. Let me know your thoughts on this month in the comment section down below. Was it as good as May? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know your favorite sneaker release of this month. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all in the next one.